Philippine city volunteers tend to fire survivors in Takik City with relief items. We meet a group of students from Taiwan's Dinan Elementary School who is safeguarding the Dakan Creek. Welcome to Dia Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in the Philippines, a fire occurred in the late evening of February 18th at Mahalika village in Takik City, destroying 47 houses and killing two residents. With the fire survivors relocated to a temporary shelter, city volunteers soon arrived for a quick survey before providing the much needed aid supplies and emotional support. <laughs> The helplessness of the fire survivors can be felt as some residents search through the charred debris for anything salvageable. The fire started from behind our house. I believe the cause was neglect candle. The fire spread so fast that we did not manage to save anything. These disaster survivors can only let go of their sorrows and try to move on. Thankfully, city volunteers promise to be there every step of the way. We are very thankful for all your help because right now we have nothing. With your help, we will not go hungry anymore because we have rice to eat. With daily necessities in hand, many locals have regained their smiles and are ready to face the days ahead. Moving to Malaysia, the Tsiji Butterworth Dialysis Center was established on November 28, 2002. Over the years, with an increase in the number of patients requiring medical attention, the center carried out expansion work in October 2012 and recently gained government approval to reopen. For volunteers and staff at the Tsiji Butterworth Dialysis Center, this is an important day. Upon receiving approval from the Ministry of Health to reopen, Tsiji volunteers celebrate by chanting a Buddhist scripture together. Representatives of the Health Ministry came here for an assessment and have approved our dialysis center as well as all our equipment. So we gather our community volunteers to chant the Lotus Sutra together. Prior to the ceremony, foundation and medical staff as well as volunteers ready the venue to welcome their counterparts. In all, 1,333 participants took part in the 13 sessions of the chanting of the Lotus Sutra. Among the participants, kidney patient Li Yuanxing sets aside his illness to join the chanting six times and at one point breaks down in tears of joy. I'm so thankful to the Tsiji nurses because they were very mindful when they came to my health. Before I was a receiver and now that I'm in a better shape, I want to become a giver to help those in greater need. Through sincere prayers, volunteers and medical staff all hope to reach and serve every needy patient in Butterworth. In Taiwan, after a short visit to Hualien, representatives from Xiamen's Medical Institute arrived at the Taipei City Hospital to learn more about the organization's humanitarian spirits. Thanks to the trip, these medical representatives all learned how to better care for their patients and improve their hospital's health care quality. Sharing experiences with one another, this is the scene at the Taipei City Hospital in Qingdian. Today, 90 medical representatives from Xiamen are here to learn more about City's philosophy of medicine, extending great love to all living beings. Representatives from Xiamen's medical institutes are here to learn more about Mr. Zhenyan's philosophy with regard to medicine, as well as how to better care for their patients. They say they have learned a lot through today's seminar. During the seminar, directors from various departments share their knowledge on topics such as quality care, doctor-patient relationships, and much more. Wu Bing, one of the guests from Xiamen, was left astonished with what he heard. 
From the little things, I can tell that Ziji hospitals focus on their patients first and foremost. That is not an easy thing. Among the representatives are medical staff from the Xiamen Maternity and Child Health Care Hospital, the deputy superintendent of the hospital, who has incorporated Ziji's philosophy into her work, says that their hospital satisfaction rate has increased significantly as a result. We have asked our nurses to focus on their attitude towards our patients and their surroundings. Our hospital satisfaction rate has increased by 10 percent over the past three months as a result. In 2012, a program was launched between city hospitals in Taiwan and Xiamen's medical institutions. Every year, medical personnel from Xiamen will come to Taiwan to learn more about city's brand of medicine to improve their hospitals medical services back home. Also in Taiwan, at City's monthly free clinic in Zuolan of Miaoli, besides helping safeguard the health of local residents, the events are also an opportunity for young people to learn and absorb new knowledge. Joining the most recent clinic were two interns from the Taizong City Hospital, who found the free clinic to be a meaningful and fulfilling experience. Joining Ziji's recent free clinic in Zuolan of Miaoli are two pharmacy interns from the Taizong Ziji Hospital. Seeing how the brothers and sisters are willing to spend their holidays here, I feel that they are really giving people. Everyone is here with a compassionate heart and they don't ask for anything in return. I'm deeply moved. Pharmacist Wu Bingfeng passes on whatever knowledge and experience he can. I hope that they will learn the basic principles of life and be inspired with good thoughts. I also hope to take this opportunity to teach them that it is more blessed to give than receive. The free clinic gives young volunteers and doctors an opportunity to gain valuable life lessons. At the free clinic, we gained a lot. Even after we went home, we still felt that joy within. For volunteers, every city event is a time to gain wisdom and Dharma joy. Here in Banqiao, New Taipei City, Mrs. Liao has been caring for her son who suffers from muscular atrophy. Being almost 70 and having to tend to her 39-year-old son daily has taken a toll on Mrs. Liao. To help, city volunteers bought an electronic bed for Mrs. Liao's son, hoping to lift some weight off her shoulders. Upon learning that an electric bed has been brought to the recycling station, city volunteers immediately loaded onto a van to take to the Liao home. Almost 70, Mrs. Liao tends to her 39-year-old immobile son on a daily basis. Therefore, the bed couldn't have come at a better time. His hands and feet are slowly atrophying, so he's very weak. It requires a lot of physical strength to lift him or turn him over, so his mother often strains her back or pulls a muscle. But to get the bed through the old and narrow apartment doorway was a challenge. It will be difficult for you to get past like this. You need to come out first. As there is no elevator in the building, volunteers then work together to carry the bed up the stairs. Next, they move the old bed into the storage room to make room for the electronic bed in the living room. While moving the bed, volunteers noticed that the storage room door had come off its hinges and immediately helped the family to make repairs. Finally getting the bed to where it's supposed to be, volunteers then notice there is no socket to plug the bed in. They immediately get to work to install the power supply. There's no power supply here. With the combined effort of Tiji volunteers, some weight has finally been lifted off Mrs. Liao's shoulders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During the
the political unrest in Zamboanga of the Philippines last September, many children witnessed violence that no child should have to see. As a result, many were left with emotional scars and trauma to which they have yet to let go. To help these children put those terrible days behind them, city volunteers have been there with emotional support as well as the gift of prefabricated classrooms, ensuring that children have a safe place to study again. To make sure students can continue their studies in a safe environment, city volunteers work hand in hand to install prefabricated classrooms. One, two, three, up. up, up. So if we can set this up immediately, and by next week they can have this additional facility, just because of our small sacrifice, this the children's education will go back to its normal pace. Volunteers initially believed that as long as students returned to school, their lives would return to normal. Nevertheless, the armed conflict last year seemed to have left almost permanent scars in many children. Well, in Zamboanga today, even after the things have, have been resolved, fear is something that lingers. Huh? It, it, it's with you at night, it's with you the next morning. You do not know what, is, what will happen next. No? In the face of the riots, Muhammad lived in fear and had to face the impermanence of life at a young age. There was an important exam last September. The war began on September 9th. In the beginning, I thought it was a game, so I went to school anyway. But while I arrived at the school, I saw the bodies and I couldn't find any gypsy on the street. It was then that I realized war had broken out. Later, Muhammad was to witness much more bloodshed as he realized that was a real war. I am really very concerned because um, when they remember the shooting and they, they, they see death around them, that young boy, that young girl will grow up with a resentment that is difficult to heal. Only 14, Muhammad now needs to learn how to let go of his fear. As he retells his story, it is obvious that he remains frightened and angry. People think it is religious. It's Muslim against Christian. But I don't think it is about religion. I think it's a deeper cultural uh, uh, mistrust between groups that do not know each other. Someone to preach again the message of love and trust so that they, they can start living and working together again. However, thanks to the company of city volunteers, Muhammad and other youngsters like him are starting to learn to leave their terror behind and once again find peace of mind. Said, um, they, they cannot give love if they have not experienced love. So we have to create more positive um, things for them, show them positive traits, like show them care, show them love, show them um, gratitude. Um, this temporary classrooms is really perfect opportunity to them. Putting their gratitude in song, Muhammad and his classmates practice for the upcoming celebration of the completion of the school's prefab classrooms. And in our next report, we will show you how the students at Zamboanga have come to cherish these castles of hope. Back to Taiwan in Taipei, we meet a group of students from the Zinan Elementary School who help monitor the Zinan Dakan Creek. Although young in age, the task of measuring the water quality is one that these students take seriously. We are tasting the Zinan Dakan Creek. Although it's small, it's still very important. Concentrating on the map before them are a group of water monitors who make up Taipei City's youngest water environment patrol team. We are going to survey the lower Jinan Bridge area. Jinan Elementary is here and we will be here. Any questions? No? Okay, then let's head out. The teacher heading the expedition today has been surveying this area for the past 20 years and to this day she continues testing at least once a month. Everyone, we have arrived at our spot today. 
not like old hands, the patrol members roll up their pants and set their shoes aside. Look at the water today. How is the clarity? With one or two years of survey experience behind them, as soon as everyone settles in, jobs are assigned. Raise your hand if you're tasting the pH level. Okay, no problems, right? Everyone has done it before. These young monitors can give adults a run for their money. First, you fill it with about 10 millimeters of water, then throw in a pill, and an indicator color will show up. Being able to tell the pH level from the color of a sample is a skill that requires practice. It's about a 7 or 8 pH, which is considered normal. The water looks clear enough and the pH indicator is normal, yet these young testers are able to see how the water quality has changed over time. To the eye, the water looks the same as the first time I was here, but the tests indicate that there's more contaminants in the water. The COD level is often high, which means the water contains a lot of chemical compounds, so I'm worried about that. Besides taking a water sample, there is a more direct way to find out the quality of the water. These children look for living organisms at the bottom of the creek bed. It basically looks like this, but it will have a shell. Taking out the field guides for identification for the children, every organism found is an environmental indicator. Is this drainage basin unpolluted or slightly polluted? Even if the COD level is slightly high, this area is still full of living things, which means the water quality is still good. Why does Taiwan Zhi spend time training these students to test water quality and pick up garbage? It's because she believes that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Because children won't forget like adults do. Here in Taiwan, city volunteers in Taipei Ceiling District will visit the Yangming home for the disabled once a month to care for the residents there. Meanwhile, their counterparts in Shanghai, China, visited seniors at the Gu Mei Nursing Home on February 22nd. Among the group were many new volunteers and parents who brought their children along, hoping to teach them the importance of filial piety. <laughs> Each time these seniors see the volunteers, what follows is always endless chit-chat. This is the result of the relationship forged between the seniors and volunteers over the years. City Volunteers Care for Seniors of the Gourmet Nursing Home over the last two years has attracted many like-minded individuals. Her third time here, volunteer Tang Xiaoyun now knows how to light up smiles on the seniors' faces. Sometimes we give them a massage. Today we show them how they can massage their own pressure points. It has great benefits. If you do this, you're massaging your acupuncture point. There are many emotions which cannot be conveyed through verbal communication. Body language, on the other hand, says a lot. Sometimes I may just be holding your hand, and just with that simple gesture, you will be able to feel my care for you. I've brought my daughter here before. A seed of kindness has been planted in her heart. And while we're here today, we want to set an example for her. Upon arriving at the Yang Ming Home for the Disabled, volunteers have already split up into teams, and they take some time to understand each patient's condition. Volunteers then take the patient outdoors to catch some sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Patients at the home don't lack material aid. What they need most is companionship. <laughs> City volunteer Huang Meiyun invites her co-workers from the bridal store to join her at the home each month. On one occasion, she managed to bring 15 people. My co-workers sleep very late, so they don't usually wake up so early. But I tell them that we are in a tug of war between good and evil. If we can pull harder, then good will win. For some, it is already their fourth visit to the home. 
Although residents of the home cannot speak very clearly, by interacting with them, however, we eventually understand what they're trying to convey. When they smile, you too can feel their happiness. The hearts of the nursing home residents and volunteers is much like the weather outside, full of warmth and sunshine. At the Taoyuan Jing Si Ho in Taiwan, over 300 trainees gathered for a volunteer training seminar, which is their first step to become city commissioners. Through the event, many also gained a better understanding of the Buddhist NGO. <laughs> On the stage here at Taoyuan's Jing Si Ho, city volunteers put on a short skit of the problems they often encounter. Volunteers hope to pass on the correct information before these trainees join the Buddhist NGO. I have heard of many false accusations before, and I was quite angry at first, but I calmed myself down. The Master said, with the right things, we should just do it. I would always tell others about the cost to make our uniforms. There is no such cost as a million dollars. Volunteers need to canvas for love and donations. The million dollars is just a myth. Through the volunteer training seminar in Taoyuan, the over 300 trainees not only gain a better understanding of Tzuji, but also vow to promote vegetarianism to all those around them. In Taiwan's Tainan, to give seniors a chance to work, local government joined hands with experts to open the Gu Tang restaurant, which hires seniors for all positions. In the future, the government also looks to start similar projects and thus help seniors find a career after retirement. Greeting by waitresses and with a dining area filled with decorations made from rice husks. This is the Gu Tang restaurant in Taiwan's Tainan. What is special about this restaurant? All the employees are seniors. Pushing a dining cart, this is Cho Zhu Lan, who is not only in charge of delivering meals to customers, but also cooking them. Listening closely to an instruction and putting stickers on products, this is 50-year-old Zhuang Shigu. I have been in the catering industry for more than 10 years. I think my experience is an advantage. I don't think that I am old. I am only 50 years old. To provide seniors with career opportunities, a group of local experts have transformed this old barn into a restaurant, with employees ranging from ages 50 and up. We used to have an employee that was more than 70 years old. Other than running our restaurant, the profits are all put towards hiring seniors or giving back to the community. Knowing that many seniors come equipped with considerable experience and expertise, Gu Tang Restaurant hopes to put these skills to good use while giving seniors another chance to work. Staying in Taiwan at the end of the show but moving to Kaohsiung, the Humanly Kindergarten recently organized a field trip for its students to the Tsuji Dolu Recycling Station in which youngsters all gained a better understanding of Tsuji's recycling work. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.